Good morning to you and welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. It's very cold out this morning up here in the Northeast. I'm just a few miles outside of Philadelphia and it is cold today. Hence the hat and the house and the flannel shirt. I don't like the heat on too high only because it dries everything out. And I even have a humidifier so I kind of keep it a little bit cooler in the evenings. It's better for sleeping. If you have trouble sleeping, I would recommend that you turn the heat down in your house. You will actually sleep better or even crack a window just a little bit. Many times I'm sitting here in the morning and I crack this window an inch just to get some fresh, like cool air in. It's nice. But first, coffee. Colombian this morning. Not bad. Not bad. My Ethiopian is taking first place right now. I know some people have mentioned some other beans. What, what else would you recommend? I recently, my, my coffees have been Brazilian. That's okay. Colombian, okay. The Sumatra, I like, but I have to be in the mood for it now. Guatemalan is very floral. I get this floral thing. Very flowery, sweet, I guess floral would be the word. My Ethiopian has that nice, smoky, earthy, potting soil kind of vibe to it that I really like. I'm going to be meeting with a former co-worker for breakfast today. I might do a video, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. So I'm looking forward to that this morning. Very, very cold out. So I just want to knock this out and just feel the need to talk to you about safety. Okay? This is an issue that I, that I see is more and more necessary as the world, I don't want to say spirals out of control, but has little moments of stupidity and chaos and horror. But we'll get into that. Blame me not, said the scorpion in a supplicatory tone. It's not my fault. It is that of my nature. It is a constitutional habit I have of stinging. I'm going to read that story to you sometime in its fullness. It's a short story. You can't blame a scorpion for stinging you. It's what scorpions do. You can't blame fire for burning you. It's what fire does. When you play with scorpions, when you play with fire, you will get stung, you will get burned. So if you're in the cycle of relationships where you're just always getting hurt all the time, are you t aren't you tired of that? Aren't you just sick and tired of just always getting hurt, always being let down? You're posting pictures of you as a couple three months later, six months later, nine months later, the pictures all have to come down and you're on that emotional roller coaster. It's because, it's because of the nature of the people that you are with. Keep that in mind. You can't change a scorpion. You can't change a scorpion. You can't make it non-stinging. You can't make fire not burn. It's always going to burn. The nature of it is that it burns. It consumes. 
We'll get into that at a later time. I get up every morning and walk around the block ten times. When I'm done, I put the block back in the drawer and go back to bed. Better a muse than a harpy. Remember that, men. Better to have a muse in your life than a harpy. Look them both up in the dictionary. Muse, M-U-S-E. And harpy, H-A-R-P-I-E. Look them both up. And then remember my words. Better to have a muse in your life than a harpy. Rejection is what knocks most people out of the game. Now, let's do a little mind shift here. Accept the fact, accept it, that rejection is what knocks most people out of the game. Here's the shift. Rejection is part of the game. It's part of the game. Rejection. It's going to happen. You can't shrivel back and give up and quit the first time you get rejected in anything in life. It's part of the game. You're not always going to win. Strap yourself in, boys. It's going to be a wild ride. That's for those that are going through divorce separation and custody issues. On the topic of safety, sit with your back to the wall <clears throat> wherever you go. Don't be afraid to create the frame to your satisfaction wherever you go. The hostess or waitress takes you to a table in the middle of somewhere. You don't want that. You want to go somewhere where you can, your back's against the wall and you can see everything. It's just smart. It's not paranoid. It's smart. It's being alert. This way, why do you ask? This way you get increased data and sensory advantage. So if any kind of... <coughs> SHTF scenarios come along, you get the privilege of responding rather than being a victim or reacting. So always have that. I know when I am on a date, the woman always says, I just feel so damn safe with you. Because I think about it ahead of time. It's a priority. It's not an afterthought. Concealed carry is a beautiful thing. The key word is concealed. Why do we do that? Some people argue for cowboy carry, open carry. Concealed carry is great. Because the element of surprise when defending or protecting yourself is your advantage. Never give someone a reason to target you in any way. In any way. You will no longer be a victim in life. Do you hear me? Listen to me. You're not going to be a victim. Not just physically, in fights and social scenarios, but personally and interpersonally, people are not going to take advantage of you. No more victim. No more. Aren't you done with getting hurt? Aren't you done with coming in second place? Aren't you so over that? Aren't you done with being a victim to your, your hunger and your... I hate to... I hate to use the word addiction, but your propensity to sugar and hard and carbs and junk. Don't be addicted to shit that's going to harm you, hurt you, make you less than the best version of yourself. 
when you become the best version or start working towards being the best version of yourself, you become less of a victim of people, less of a victim of society, less of a victim of big pharma, less of a victim of companies that create pesticides and genetically modified junk. You're aware, you are woke. How can you be the best version of yourself? The first thing I want you to think of is this. If you've ever driven a nice car, like a high performance car, it requires a high octane gas. That's the proper fuel to make it run properly. If you put less than the recommended gas in that gas tank, it's not going to run the way it was designed. You are a, you as a human being are a high performance vehicle. Think about this. You're not an economy vehicle. You're a high performance vehicle. And you need optimal fuel. So you do that with everything that you intake. Think about the intake in your life. What are the areas, the receptor sites? Your mouth, of course, what you put in your mouth. My life changed when someone said to me, your workout begins in the kitchen. That may, that just ding, just something went off in my head and it rang true. And then I heard uh, someone add to that abs begin in the kitchen. I like your workout begins in the kitchen because there were times when I was going to the gym three, four, or five times a week, pumping iron, and I wasn't getting the results that I wanted because what was happening in the kitchen and what I was shuffling into my mouth wasn't supporting what was happening in the gym. I was just kind of breaking even. It reminds me of the people that say, well, when you work out regularly, you can eat what you want. Let me tell you, as you get older, you will not be eating what you want because you're going to look like a sack of... You don't want to do that. Now, your hair is going to turn gray, everyone. Most, most people, your hair is going to turn gray. That's just a fact, okay? Pardon the Kleenex, <laughs> the tissue. This is that time of year where my nose, I get stuffy and my nose gets drippy for like four months. If anyone has any solutions, please put the comments down below. I've been trying local honey. That's for the pollen. But I think, I think with the change of seasons, I'm not sure if it's just the cold weather or if it's literally mold spores or pollen in the air. I don't know. I've heard some people say you need like anywhere between three and five days of sub-freezing weather. After the cold weather, that kills the mold spores and they're no longer active and breathing is much better. So, I will consider all of your suggestions, please. Oh, and also to subscribe to the channel. That would be a wonderful thing. Okay, thanks. What is the best version of you? Seriously, what makes your engine run better than anything else? Like I got up this morning. I don't even want to tell you what time I got up. It, it was so early, it was ridiculous. And then I checked email, came down to the kitchen. I'm here in the cozy nook, which is just a little bump out area in my kitchen. Made my coffee, fed the animals, put the coffee pot on. I make my first cup of coffee with the French press. And I, I started thinking right away, like right away, about best version of yourself. Rather than succumb to stuff as it happens, the weather, pollen, mold spores, people, and their moods, 
Not everybody wakes up on the right side of the bed. I come downstairs right away and I have a pint glass, fill it up with filtered water, and I just down it. I don't even, don't sip it, I just chug it. First thing I do, first thing. And then I start my little kitchen kind of routine. Ever since I started the water thing, I wake up, boom, just like that. It's amazing what has happened since I started the water routine. You know who got me on that was Andrew Nicastro, who's one of my clients. Uh, I guess he's what? He's about 20 years younger than me, somewhere in there. I'd say he's in his uh, late 30s. And he told me that once, just drink 16 ounces of water, the equivalent of like a bottle of water. I just fill up a pint in room temperature water. If it's cold water, because I, I dispense a lot of water and keep it in the cabinet, and then I usually drink the room temperature water. I can't chug ice cold water, like out of the refrigerator door, that water dispenser. I can't do that. For some reason, the ice cold water just upsets my stomach or it just doesn't feel right and I just can't just put it down in one shot. I gotta sip it and I find um, that when I just have room temperature water, water that's just been sitting out on the counter or in a cabinet in a bottle and chug that literally within 10 minutes clarity just starts happening right away. I'm talking even before the coffee comes. That has helped me to start being the best version of myself when I started doing that. That was amazing. Breaking news. Masculinity is toxic. No information, no other information was given. Back to you, Elaine like a news report, right? Nothing substantiated, just sound bites, sound bites. It's interesting, you know how some people will say stuff like, I heard coffee was bad for you, or I read somewhere that coffee was good for you, or to fill in the blank, whatever. I heard sit-ups are good for you, I heard crunches are bad for you. you know. And we live in this soundbite culture. And then people who aren't true thinkers and reflectors, they say things like this. Six months ago they said coffee was good for you. Now they say it's bad for you. These are the people that love using the word they. They say coffee is good. Who the hell is they? One stupid researcher with all kinds of biases puts out a report and it gets spread like nonsense and there's a they that gets attached to it. Researchers, like, researchers can be assholes too, you know, and can be biased. The whole concept of scientist or researcher is not as valid as you think or as we have been led to believe. You need to have a healthy skepticism when it comes to research and scientists, professors, studies. 90% of it is bull. Think about what comes out of universities now. Universities are nothing but institutions that prolong adolescence. They keep people from making money. They no longer teach skills. Trade schools teach skills. The average welder can get out of school and start making 75000 his first year out of a welding school. Not four years of wasting time, smoking pot, getting drunk, getting laid, and sleeping around. Welding school. 75,000 a year. By his third year, he's making over 100,000 easily. Show me something you can do. Show me something you can do. 
skills are lacking. College is such a waste. And think about it, most of these studies and research are coming out of universities and colleges. No offense to anyone who is currently in college or teaching in college. I taught in college part-time for many, many years. Five different colleges to be exact. And I was surrounded by BS. And I couldn't stand it. In chaotic live fire scenarios, like these nightclubs and these public places that are getting shot up, protect those who need it in one to three seconds. You're with your woman, talking to the guys, you're with your woman, shove her under the table, get her out and exit right away, like w within a second, right away. And then you run to the chaos within one to three seconds to do what, you, you might ask? Overwhelm, confound, overcome, and or neutralize the threat. People who come into public places and start shooting places up, they don't expect anyone to fight back. They're expecting sitting ducks. They expect everyone to be crouching and going like this as they just create disorder and chaos. They don't expect you to fight back with a chair, with your own personal protection system. They don't expect that. So when you're coming at them, you think your safety, you think the safety of your loved ones, it's instinctual. You overwhelm them because they're not as focused as you might think, or as the news would have you believe. Overwhelm and confound them, even for one second. And then overcome them physically and neutralize the threat. I say we ban forks because they cause obesity. No more forks. Can we get back to the phrase, I'll believe it when I see it? I'm in Michael's Arts and Crafts and a toddler says to their mom, it's Santa. The mother says, I know, honey, it was in the Christmas aisle. Then the little kid points at me and says, no, mommy, he's behind you. That was pretty cool. Voting in America is not mere partisanship anymore. Ballots have taken the place of bullets. We are not being uncivil, uncharitable, or hostile when we cast a vote. Let me repeat that. We are not being uncivil, uncharitable, or hostile when we cast a vote. We are committing ourselves to a method of the peaceful transfer of power for the good of our community. Dr. Peter Lilback. I think I know who the Benghazi guys would have voted for. If you want to stop being burned, stay away from fire. Fire doesn't change, nor will it ever change. It always burns. You can change all you want, but fire will always burn. I've hurt and alienated and lost people in my life because of politics but I've never, but never because of my values and my worldview. There is a reason why people like writers go to places separate from their homes to write. Do you live in a place that inspires you or is it just merely affordable? Do you live in a place where you can get up and start creating? Imagine that kind of lifestyle. I live in a place where I can be creative. I love it. It's incredible. I don't have to escape. 
sometimes I want to, to get away from suburbia, which I'm increasingly having a very severe distaste for. You can't hear it right now because I have a microphone right here, but I can hear with my one good ear. I can, I can hear traffic. And it starts at about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I can just start hearing trucks and traffic and road noise. Fame and fortune are two completely different things. Fame does not lead to fortune unless you mo monetize it. You can have a load of followers, but until they pull out their credit card and order and reorder and subscribe, they're going to be broke. Followers don't mean money. Likes and hearts don't mean money. Well, I'm looking forward to breakfast with my former co-worker. I might make a short video, I'm not sure. One of the things I miss is interaction with people. I am in a private men's grooming studio, cutting hair, shaping beards, doing straight razor shaves, three days a week. And it's private. And it's me serving people but it's not fellowship. And I do enjoy getting out and having fellowship with people and with enjoying the company of females, which is always inspiring. The muse type of females, not the harpies, the muse, the ones that are inspiring. Men, never underestimate the power of a woman to inspire you. And this is not a beta male, blue pill, wimpy approach. Allow the beauty of a woman, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What is beautiful to one is not necessarily beautiful to another. But allow that to complement your life. Women are not the enemy. I want you to understand them and allow them to compliment you, to add to your life, not take away from your life. If a woman takes away from your life, it's your fault, not her fault. It's your fault. You didn't find a woman to compliment you. I'm not saying give you compliments, but compliment add to your life, enhance your life. The times that you felt weakest in life were times that you have felt rejected. I know that. The times where you felt strong and unstoppable were times when you had support and someone said, I believe in you. You're awesome. I love being with you. I love your mind. I love the words that come out of your mouth. There's nothing like that. It's wonderful. So seek people that are going to contribute to you being the best version of yourself. You don't need to change for anybody but yourself. And give up the idea of the right person or your soulmate. No such thing as the right person. No such thing as a soulmate. You know who the right person is? You. You're the right person. I heard someone say many years ago, the key to finding the right person is to be the right person. It, it, it's cute. It sounds like something that would come from a pulpit during a singles or marriage conference or something like that. But it's false. It's false. There's no such thing as the right person. You make yourself the right person and people will be attracted to you. But that's not the reason why you make yourself the right person. You attract a completely different human being. Different people come into your life when you are your best version. 
And with that, I'm going to say have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow morning.